So is this really the GOAT sneaker? Is this the greatest white sneaker of all time? That's what people are saying about the legendary and phenomenally expensive white Achilles sneaker from Common Projects. This shoe is broadly considered to be the apex, the peak, the pinnacle of white sneakerdom. And if you're watching this video, you are probably wondering, is it worth the eye-watering price of over $400 a pair. Well, this is Nick at stridewise.com and friend, you have come to the right place. This is not a paid video. I did not get these shoes for free. I went to Columbus Circle here in New York City, paid for them myself, and I felt that gut punch to my wallet that you will also feel if you indeed decide to buy these very expensive shoes. I've been wearing these shoes myself on and off for several months now so that you and I can explore the super clean, sleek, timeless, youthful yet very grown up white sneaker that is the Achilles from the very mysterious footwear company, Common Projects. So Common Projects started in 2004 as the brainchild of Prathan Pupat, an art director in New York City and Flavio Girolami, an Italian creative consultant. And if you can believe it, even though it is a hugely popular shoe and is the cornerstone of every outfit on the subreddit Mail Fashion Advice, they've actually never spent a dollar on advertising. Their website is complete dog crap. You can't even navigate it. All it has is like a list of retailers. Their Instagram is absolutely hideous. They practically never even update it. The only thing that has fueled this shoe's popularity is word of mouth. And like, look, I get the fact that they don't advertise is in of itself its own form of advertising, but it's definitely the kind of product and the kind of approach that breeds a real cult-like mentality. And more than once here in New York City, in fact, it's even happened just outside when we were filming the outdoor portion of this review, people come up to me, they see the shoes and they go, those, those common projects? Are you, are you wearing the common projects? Are you in the cult? Are you part of this? And uh, I kind of have drunk the Kool-Aid a little bit. While the market is flooded with riffs and rip-offs of the classic streamlined white minimalist leather kicks, there's a pretty strong argument to be made that no one has done it better than Common Projects. So let's take a close look at the aesthetics of the shoe before we dive into the construction and the materials themselves. Now this is the simple man's sneaker. Unlike, say, the Adidas Stan Smith with its dotted stripes, unlike many newer imitators, this is just the ultimate in super, super clean design. There's not even any branding on the tongue or the sole. The only little bit of design is the iconic gold foil stamp on the outside heel, which if you're wondering is the style, size, and color of the shoe, which some people feel is like incongruent with the minimalist aesthetic of the shoe, but others like it because it's like glamorizing something so simple and mundane that it's normally only found on the inside of your shoes on the tag. That's what someone said on Reddit anyway. <laughs> so it's a totally monochromatic shoe, just 100% white, white, white. And that kind of keeps it as low key as it is luxurious. It's just a meticulously designed shoe. It's just nice, smooth white leather overlaid with leather eyelet panels running from the forefoot to the ankle collar where there is a minimal ankle tab above this seam that splits the leather running up the center of the heel. White suede lines the inside of the heel for some added traction. And the rest of the inside of the shoe is lined with white smooth leather. And a really big selling point of this shoe is the fact that the sole is actually stitched onto the upper. It's glued as well, but you can see the stitching running along the perimeter of the shoe, which is one of the many very subtle ways the sneakers tell you that they are not your average kicks. The fit and the look is very streamlined and slim. It's too slim for most wide feet, unfortunately, but uh, them's the brakes. <laughs> But there's like a fine line between too bulbous and wide and thick and teenagery. But this is an unmistakably adult take on a youthful shoe. High Snobiety had this review where the author Alex Era said, quote, when I wear a pair of Achilles low, I feel like a grown ass man acting my goddamn age, yet youthful at the same time, which I thought was just like a fantastic quote describing these shoes. And it's just smart and dignified. Like in some ways it's like a dress shoe. I mean, not literally, although literally actually I've been to weddings where people wear these with a suit and they kind of pull it off. Like it's a sneaker, but it has this breezy stylishness that makes them look just as attractive sitting under some frayed jeans as they do on like a slim suit on casual Fridays or in khakis or in joggers or sweatpants. Like it's a bit too slim to look good with uh, like under wide leg openings, like with like big baggy jeans, that kind of thing. You do kind of need them with like a slimmer cuff or, you know, just shorts, but nonetheless, it's like 
young and it's old. It's one of the few sneakers that looks good on just about anybody and just about any outfit. All right, let's talk materials. Every single Achilles shoe is made in Italy's Marsh region in a factory that has been churning out proper footwear for over a hundred years. This is made from what's called Nappa leather, a type of leather that is noted for its soft feel. It's actually not super uncommon in couches because it's nice and soft, but it's also quite sturdy as well. The leather's also been treated a little bit to give it something of a sheen. It's what's called patent leather. It's not much of a sheen though. It's kind of what people call matte with sheen, which I know is kind of a contradiction in terms, but you know, they're complex shoes. They've got a lot of elements going on here. <laughs> this is not your normal kind of shoe. So it's matte with a tiny little bit of sheen. The tongue is really, really nice and thick and soft as well. I really love it. The leather confers more durability than obviously like a canvas sneaker, but even a lot of lower quality leather sneakers as well. And the stitching is also really top notch. Again, I've been wearing these for a few months. I've got no loose threads at all. And so this is a sturdy shoe with a heavy bottom and the stitching isn't going anywhere. That's the sole. The upper is attached to one piece rubber margum soles, margum soles, uh, which can take a beating without crumbling and rubbing down like most rubber outsoles. It's like a really thick and really good quality Italian rubber. Gear Patrol calls Margum a revered Italian brand that creates many of the outsoles for top luxury footwear brands because they genuinely are the best of the best. So they got Gear Patrol stamp of approval. And the way it's attached to the upper is called sidewalk stitching or strobel construction. It's a mixture of cementing and stitching, which is super rare. Most sneakers just have the sole glued on. Like this is glued and stitched with the stitching being the main method of attachment. And that means it's possible maybe you could get these resold when the time comes, maybe. But more importantly, it means that with age, you won't get those holes around the toe break that you do with like every other sneaker you own, which is just such a big load off my mind. Now, cleanliness is next to godliness, and it says a lot about a man if he can keep his sneakers nice and white. This is obviously a big differentiator between sneakerheads and boot lovers who want their boots look as beat up and old as quickly as possible. But if you have a pair of sneakers, you want to keep them as clean as you can. A nice white pair of sneakers that shows that you are a man of care, a man of hygiene, a man who cares about his appearance, a man who probably has a six pack. I mean, I'm just messing around here, but uh, yeah, it does sort of confer a sort of image of like someone who like takes care of themselves. So the good news is that this is smooth leather. So there aren't a lot of places for dirt to hide and get trapped on the shoe, which is good. So a lot of the time, just getting a damp rag and wiping down the shoes is going to do the trick. Now and then they're going to need a bit more of a more in-depth cleaning. So what you do then, first off, you get a horsehair brush to brush off all like, you know, surface dirt that's easy to get rid of. In this little montage here, I should have taken out the laces, uh, but I was about to go outside. I couldn't be bothered, but you should take out the laces when you are cleaning your shoes. So you give it a brush down with a horsehair brush. As for cleaning products, a lot of people like Jason Marks products for some reason. It's like closely associated with the brand. I'm not sure why, but any like leather cleaner will do. For me personally, I'm a really big fan of Cobbler's Choice Leather Spot Cleaner. It's what I use in all my boots. I decided to give it a try on these common projects and it worked really well. It really did a really good job of uh, cleaning up all the uh, bits of dirt on the boots. Now and then you're gonna have a slightly more stubborn stain or like bit of dirt on there. For that, you just wanna use a stiffer head brush. Uh, this stiff head brush here I got from Armstrong's All Naturals, but you can also just use a toothbrush if you want. Now, when you inevitably get scuffs on your leather, that's the kind of stuff that cleaning isn't going to fix. For that, you just wanna use some white leather cream. Now, Saphir is like broadly considered to be the best product to use for your shoes. Uh, as a result, it's extremely expensive. They do have a white shoe cream that you can use, but you can also get some white shoe cream from Kelly's. It's half the price, it's gonna do just as good a job. So I put links to both of those in the description below and in the full article for this video, which you should definitely read as well. With the shoe cream, you just put it on, you put like a lot of it on the scuff, wait for it to dry. And then you just kind of like wipe away the excess, but you, you generally put like a lot of it on first, wait for it to dry first. The sole is a lot harder to keep clean. For that, you want to use a Mr. Clean Magic eraser or something similar. And for repelling dirt and stains, a lot of people like to give us a quick spray with a leather protector like Jason Mark's Repel. Again, it's always Jason Mark with Common Projects. Uh, you can do that if you want. A lot of people feel like spraying on those sorts of protectors suffocates the leather. I don't know, it's uh, up to you. It's a very controversial sort of topic, but uh, if, you, if you want to keep them white, that will help. As for the longevity of the shoe, I'm not sure how that's going to affect it. it uh, different people have different opinions on that one. And finally, and this is the silliest part of owning these shoes and the silliest part of this review, but nonetheless, it is true. Remember, these are leather shoes with a leather footbed and leather is prone to drying up and shrinking inward. And also, it's also prone to getting musty as well. So you do want to use shoe trees 
with your common projects sneakers. Shoe trees is what everybody with a brain uses for their nice quality boots. For a lot of people, it's a very foreign concept to use for sneakers. But again, they're made of leather, you wanna do that. Everybody who uses shoe trees with their boots and with their common project sneakers will attest that when you have shoe trees in there, uh, it helps to keep the shoes to keep their shape as well. It keeps them from getting too wrinkly and it helps them to last longer as well. And you also wanna give them a day of rest between wears. Ideally, you don't wanna wear these every single day. I know they're sneakers, which is, seems like the kind of item that you're not supposed to think that much about care. But the fact is they're $400 sneakers, you wanna protect your investment. And if you use shoe trees and if you take care of your shoes, this is what a pair of common projects looks like when they're well taken care of for two years. And if you're taking care of these shoes, I think you can expect a good five-ish years out of them, maybe even more. When figuring out your fit and your sizing with these shoes, there are four reasons why it is kind of a pain in the ass. Number one, they only use European sizes. Number two, they don't have wide widths. And it's a pretty narrow shoe already. I'm fine, like I have like a normal width, but if you're even slightly on the wider side of normal, you're probably gonna have trouble with these shoes. They don't have wider widths. Number three, they don't do half sizes. And number four, a lot of people, there's a lot of misinformation out there about like whether or not you should size down. So for me, I did. My true size is an 11.5 on a Brannock device, uh, which roughly translates to like a 45.5 in European sizes. I got a 44 on the advice of many people on the internet and it was too small, it was too small. So I took these to the store in Columbus Circle, the Nordstrom's uh, here in New York City. And uh, I tried on the size 45 and I went back and forth between the 45 and 46 for a pretty long time. It really enraged my shopkeeper. He wasn't super happy with me, but I just couldn't figure it out because it was a little bit smaller as a 45, a little bit bigger as a 46. So given that the 11.5 shoe size that I have is 45.5, I would say these are true to size. That was my experience anyway. Uh, anyway, so they need to do half sizes. I would really have been, I would have liked to have a 45.5, uh, but this is still fine. It's still a very comfortable shoe. I'm really, really happy with it. You can see in this shot here, there's a leather footbed. It's really nice and thick and soft. And as you can see, my toes have like indented into it, like quite firmly. So sort of similar to a nice pair of boots, the footbed and the leather sole have like sort of uh, conformed to the shape of my foot over time, which is nice. They have gotten more comfortable as time goes on. The footbed really is nice and thick and soft. A lot of people say it's like walking on a cloud. That's a bit hyperbolic, but uh, I'm gonna say it anyway, it's like walking on a cloud. I really like the feeling of it. The also the bit of suede in the uh, in the back of the inside of the shoe really does help to keep your uh, heel from slipping, which is gonna be good news for a lot of people if they had to wind up sizing up for their shoe and it's like a little bit loose, that suede is going to help things. The tongue, nice and soft and thick, really does feel nice walking around in that. And also, as I mentioned, the outsole, it really has like, quite a lot of weight to it. A pair of these shoes is like two or three pounds uh, and it really does have that sort of uh, feeling of adding some value to the shoe. The fact when you're walking around, you can feel the shoe on your feet. Now, as far as the price goes, these shoes are expensive. They cost between $400 and $450. They are very pricey. I paid about $411 for these with the taxes and everything, pretty close to 450 bucks. There are a lot of competitors out there as well. Like I know they're at the shoe from New Republic and Kent Wang, but I have seen older pairs of those shoes and older pairs of common projects. The fact of the matter is, they just don't age as well as common projects. There's like so much that goes into these shoes that differentiates them. The fact that it is like a stitched down construction as well. I mean, it's not stitched down the way boots are, but it is stitched construction. The fact that that means that it's not going to pull away from the upper anytime soon. It means you're not gonna get the holes around the toe break that everybody hates in their sneakers. It's also really quality outsoles, really high quality leather upper, all this sort of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that is unique to common projects. Now I've done a lot of research the closest thing out there is a shoe from the company Taft, uh, which I've reviewed a few times here for their boots, but they also have a sneaker. I think it's just called Ver Sneaker. I'll put a link to the product in the description below if you wanna check it out. But that's really, it's the closest thing you're gonna get. It's actually made from the exact same leather, has the exact same aesthetic. It's also got this stitched construction as well. So it's got a lot that's similar. It's not exactly the same. The outsole is, uh, is different. It's not the exact same kind of outsole. Uh, the footbed is not quite as soft. Also, you obviously don't get these little numbers or the same brand cachet you get from Common Projects. And look, a good $100 of the price is definitely the brand cachet you get from Common Projects. That's just like sort of the way it works. But uh, nonetheless, I've looked at the market, I've looked at all the competitors. Taft really is a very, very good option if that's something you're interested in, if you want to save about 200 bucks on a pair of shoes. But I will concede, there's nothing out there that is quite like the Common Projects Achilles. Now, whether or not that means it's worth the price, that's up to you. All right, so let's wrap it up. Why should you consider getting a pair of Common Projects Achilles sneakers? 
uh, they are just so cool. Like they are the coolest shoes. They're so goddamn cool. Like besides the fact that they don't pay anything for advertising, which I confess I'm pretty seduced by, the whole breezy but dressy and casual but formal and really simple but still unmistakably branded, the whole aesthetic they've got going for it, it really is just the most versatile white sneaker. Like there is, you can wear these with every single outfit in the entire world. Like maybe not with a tuxedo, fine, but I've seen more than enough guys that really pull this off with a suit, with blazers. You can also wear it with uh, just like a tank top and board shorts at the beach. It just goes with absolutely everything. It's like phenomenally versatile and that alone, like there's an argument to be made that you're gonna get your money's worth from that. I also really love the construction. Unlike almost any other sneaker in the entire world, uh, this stitch construction, I've said it a million times, but the holes you get on the side of the shoe at the toe break drive me crazy with all of my other sneakers, but that does not happen with the Command Project, which is really cool. I like the weight of it, I like the heft of it. Uh, again, I've said this a few times, but I love the fact that when you're working around these, I know it's kind of silly and simplistic to say that if a shoe is uh, heavy or if something is heavy, therefore it is expensive and it's worth something. Are they heavy? Yeah. Then they're expensive, put them back. But nonetheless, yeah, when you're wearing these shoes, it's like a, it constantly reminds you that you're wearing something special. It's like kind of silly, but I just, I like the weight of it. I like the fit of it. I like the comfort of it. I like the fact that it's lined. I love this leather footbed. I like the way that it molds the shape of my foot over time, makes the shoes feel a bit more me. Leather's really high quality, really easy to take care of. And it's possible that you might be able to resole these shoes when the time comes and they last even longer. I'm not gonna pretend these like boots. I'm not gonna say they're gonna last you decades and decades. But uh, they definitely have a lot more durability than your average white sneaker. Now, there are plenty of downsides with these shoes. Uh, the first one, the main one that I don't hear people really say very much is that they're not sneakers exactly, you know? I mean, the word sneaker has a connotation of casual shoes, you can just kind of beat around, you can wear them anywhere, you don't have to worry about what happens to them. But these shoes, like they, are, they have a very exalted status among footwear. There are plenty of people online who will say you shouldn't wear these to a party in case something gets spilt on them and you shouldn't get like thrown in a pool with them, which is not something that happens often, but like nonetheless, there are stories online of guys being thrown into a pool wearing these shoes and then they get like musty and the leather gets out of shape and that kind of stuff. Like you even have to wear goddamn shoe trees with these. So what I'm trying to say is that although it is a sneaker, it does require a lot more care and upkeep and thought. You have to be more conscious of these shoes than you are with a regular pair of sneakers. That's something you need to keep in mind. Like they're not, they're casual shoes, but they're not that casual, if that makes sense. On that note, the leather will crease, like it just will. I've been using shoe trees with these, uh, but they've still, the leather has still creased a little bit. It's still Nappa leather, right? Uh, to minimize that happening, yeah, use the shoe trees, let them rest a day between wears as well, because the shoe trees help you suck up all the extra moisture. There's also a method called sawtooth lacing. You can look it up, there's like videos of it on YouTube. It's a method of lacing these shoes, which helps you like kind of spread the tension a bit more evenly throughout the shoe, and that can potentially help to slow the onset of creases, but the creases are gonna happen, like they're just gonna happen, like whatever, they're sneakers, like that's going to happen. Just just don't think of these shoes as immortal, I guess is what I'm trying to say, they're not invulnerable. Uh, the suede on the back of the heel there, that will eventually come off, everybody says that, so you can look forward to that. Another thing, a lot of people don't like the fact that the toe box is really quite shallow, like they'll feel their uh, toenail hitting the, uh, the upper when they're wearing it, that's something that bugs some people. Uh, and on a related note, they are quite slim, they're quite sleek. And the sizing is not great. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of problems with the sizing. Uh, no half sizes and no wider widths are the big ones. So that's just gonna put a lot of people out of the running. These are fine on me. I just would have really liked a half size bigger, but a whole size was just too much. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a downside for the shoes as well. The nice, sleek, minimalist look comes with a few caveats. Number one, it is so sleek that, uh, again, you can't really wear them with baggy pants. They sort of like get lost with wider cuffs. So you wanna have relatively fitted pants or you know shorts uh, that's something i think is important also the second caveat is that of course while they are known as being the minimalist sneaker they do have these gold foil stamped numbers on the side uh, which some people feel really does take away from the simplicity now if you didn't have those numbers literally nobody would know that you were wearing common projects which i think would really take away the fun of it for a lot of people so uh, i don't think that many people are upset about it but the point i'm trying to make is that there are actually more simple uh, leather white sneakers out there if simplicity is actually what you're after uh, now, some find these shoes pretty stuffy. Uh, they are leather sneakers. After all, in hot weather, uh, they can get a bit stuffy. They're not cotton sneakers, and cotton sneakers do exist, if that's something you would rather have, if that's like a big deal breaker for you. And then finally, they are really, really, really expensive. These are expensive shoes. Now, in this video, I think I made a pretty good case as for why there's nothing else quite like common projects. If you spend the money on these shoes, I think you can be safe. I think you can be comfortable in the knowledge 
that there is nothing else like the Gumroad Project. I would definitely say it is unparalleled. If you can't spend the money, there are some pretty okay substitutes for less money, but they won't be quite like the Common Projects. All right, those are my very in-depth thoughts on the Achilles sneaker from Common Projects. Uh, they're, they're really, I keep saying this, there really is nothing quite like them on the market. They do cost a lot of money. Uh, it's up to you as to whether or not it is actually worth it, but I'm pretty glad I spent the money on these. They're gonna last me a pretty long time and I get a lot of compliments on them. The full written review with a bunch of pictures and stuff is in the description below. It is more detailed. I encourage you to check it out and click around the website and make sure you subscribe as well because I've got a whole lot more sneaker reviews, boot reviews, jeans reviews, and all other sorts of men's fashion kind of stuff coming up.